<laughs> Hello, everybody. I am so I almost forgot to hit record, to be honest with you guys, because I've said this so many times. All the people I film with on a regular basis are my actual in real life friends, even though we met through YouTube, through Zoom. Shanti and Mornay are family to me at this point. And so we get to chit chatting about life. And all of a sudden I'm like, wait a minute. I should hit record. <laughs> so, I'm so, so, so happy to have them with me today. How you guys doing? Morning. And Shanti from Aquarius Rising African and Solutions by Aquarius Rising Africa, which those links are <laughs> down in the description box below. How are y'all doing? Uh, really good. Really good. Thank you. Uh, winter's coming here. Um, which is probably a good thing, maybe not so good because we had a very late summer and looks like an early winter as well. But other than that, really good. Things are happening. Things are moving. The energies are crazy, crazy, cray, cray. But at it's the end of the day, show, you know, yeah, yeah, really got to get out of this shit show and turn it into a gold show right <laughs> every day it's like i wonder what happens today like what's gonna happen today um, could be exciting so, yeah exactly and I, I have to say i always think laughter is such the best medicine because that's one thing darkness really? doesn't understand is is humor and it's such a high to be able to laugh and i know I, a lot of uh spiritual teachers have said that the highest form of spirituality is laughter and i was telling shanti and mornay before we recorded that the episode I did on their show on Monday, we were having some fun joking around saying that this was an open book test. And I got so many positive emails and responses about how you guys were laughing right along with us. And I don't want to speak for them, but for me as uh, someone who has been blessed to have a platform, that's part of why I have the platform is that we can all laugh together with the audience or cry together or like figure things out together. And so I appreciate you guys, the feedback. We were having fun. If you can't laugh, you would cry. So, um, so I appreciate all you guys for letting us know that because we, I consider our viewers to be our friends as well, because we're, we're literally all trying to figure all this out together and um this should show. This yeah. should show. like <laughs> did we really sign up for this like, <laughs> like you know i always laugh about the hunger games where she goes i volunteer as tribute like were we really the souls out there being like i'll do this like <laughs> can we exactly. change our minds and like abort mission at any time no um but no it's such it's such an honor to be because without without this shit show um i wouldn't know morning and shanti and i'm sure the people watching there's so many people out there that you have in your life now that you would not have had in your life if it wasn't for um everything that's that's happened to us knowingly mm -hmm. happened to us in like the last what six years since like 2016 um but obviously many people have been awake for longer and so uh if it wasn't for that there's always a silver lining and it's funny because before we were filming we were talking about all the new things that are coming up and i know in the cassiopeian forum they've had they have said that we are in for more suffering like we're, we're going to go through some more really hard times. And it's almost like when you, when you, like Shanti talks a lot about alchemy as well. Like when you clean gold, when you boil, you have to put heat on it to make it boil so that the impurities can come up so you can wipe those impurities away. And that friction that's created is what forces that change. And something I, that Shanti has helped me a lot with is understanding um, our own vibrational frequency and I know Shanti did some major healing on me. And she said something that really, really struck me that when you're being attacked, either energetically or whatever, the way to stop it is to raise your frequency so high that it can't even touch you. And that's something that um, I know Catherine and I have talked about. And one thing I believe we are the storm. What does that mean? That we have to start, we got to stop like crying about being in a pity party over what's happening and actually work on ourselves because when we take that initiative and that accountability to do our own shadow work to do to raise our own vibration that's when things shift that's when things collectively the collective consciousness shifts and so i'm going to shut up now because i want mornay and shanti to take over but they're, they're the experts <laughs> yeah, you said it beautifully because you know um the more shit there is, the greener the grass at the end of the day. And if you just look at it, I can see there's going to be more suffering, obviously, because we've got so much healing still to be done, to be done. 
Yeah. I, I can remember when I started um, my journey with Shanti uh, 12 years ago, at that stage, I was like, wow, everybody must be awake right now. At 2012, when we launched our book, I thought, wow, everybody must be ready for it right now. And I just realized that, you know, life is not like the movie we show, you, show it to be. This People are asleep in the sense of people are still has so much stuff that still needs to be released and healed. And if you look at this evil agenda and the people, they actually look into those weaknesses, weaknesses inside of ourselves. And the sooner we get that healing process starting within ourselves, and the sooner we raise our vibration, the sooner these guys don't have control anymore. They, exactly. they can't take our power. Remember, this is a spiritual battle. It's, yeah. it's not like um, you're a victim in this and uh, you didn't know and you could play victim and blame and be angry. That's not going to help anybody. It's just we got to realize that this is a spiritual battle. And like Chantel loves to say it, energy first, then actions. Of, well, what, yeah, energy first then it happens, you know? So action, first action to, second, yeah. Yes, yeah. So yeah. we first need to do that. And the sooner we get to this place, we, let's just start talking about healing. Let's start, stop. Yes, we have to be aware of what's going on around us. Yes, of course. But we have to spend a lot more focus on how we're going to process sort out it this. and heal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because we created, we, we're part of this. It's not like one person and one group is to blame. We're all to blame. Yeah. So the sooner we get over that and just start healing, it's it's so much better. It's there's so much we can do, and that's why I love you brought us up in the show today to talk about this beautiful healing and <laughs> spiritual well, stuff. You said something to Cassiopeia and said too. Part of this process is accepting that you're the problem as well. That we've ha we have been the problem. All these bad things these people have done, we've allowed it to happen. And part of that process is accepting that, not just blaming them for what they're doing, but reflecting in ourselves and how we allowed this to happen that's the first part step and like it's like that um slingshot i love this analogy the more you pull a slingshot back when you release it the further it will go so you think about pulling back into the darkness the, the more you pull back into your own shadow <laughs> work once that releases right yeah. into light uh, i've got a similar you know, one sorry yeah to go <laughs> Yeah, I just, I'm just, okay, quickly, it's like, um, it's like a well, the deeper you dig, and the digging is sometimes very, it hurts, you know, you have to break ground, the more water you can fill the well with, so the more love you can have, so dig, 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 <laughs> but yeah. Keep digging. <laughs> you know, there's, there's really, there's, there's, I mean, I honestly live by, by the golden rule. Everything in life is energy, everything. You know, God created this universe from pure, powerful, positive, vibrating energy. And every frequency within itself is pure and good. And you can imagine frequencies are like hair, gazillions of them. And while it's, they are vibrating in harmony and beautifully, it's, Think of someone with long, beautiful, flowing hair. Mm -hmm. But the minute they get knotted up and gunked up, the energy ceases to flow. Okay. So energy in itself, every frequency in itself is pure and beautiful. How we as humans take those frequencies and connect them or, 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 not them or plat them determines whether they are positive or negative right so we we create from the energy you can bake a delicious chocolate cake for example using top of the range ingredients or you can bake a chocolate cake and put liver in it which is really not going to give you a very good experience right so really, at the end of the day, energy can never be created or destroyed, only ever transferred or transformed. Now, when we look at others and blame others, we are transferring that energy. And that is where the problem lies, because the minute we blame someone else for something, we disempower ourselves completely, actually. To blame someone for something 
is probably the most disempowering thing you could do to yourself. So when you take it within and you understand that each person is a mirror, each situation is a mirror, then you can start transforming it. And that's where the alchemy lies. So you then take it within you and that sadness. And, you know, we talk about anger, for example. Many people are very angry right now. And, you know, how do we transform anger? How do we get rid of anger? How do we, how do we get anger out of us? How do we release the anger from us? Well, you don't want to be doing that. If you are feeling anger, that is your emotion. And the way to change anger is through compassion. That's the first thing. And it's not about showing the other person compassion. That's not where it begins. Because, or the, other, or the situation, because it's very difficult to show when you're angry with someone and you're in that 3D mode of they did this and look at them. And, you know, when you're on that path of just, destructive mind thoughts and things, it's very difficult to see that person in a compassionate light. Let's face facts. Mm -hmm. So I'm not asking you to show the person compassion. But what I'm suggesting you do is you show yourself compassion. So it's like you take that angry part. Let's say you feel it in your heart or in your belly or in your head or wherever. And you just imagine a mother wrapping her arms around a newborn baby. Or if you have a baby or if you've ever had a baby, imagine yourself holding your anger like you would hold your newborn child or your toddler that is in a bad space or has just hurt itself or in pain or whatever. And all you do is you just say, it's okay. Yeah. So it starts with that. And then you start showing your own emotions, compassion, because then you're going to see that anger or resentment that you, or, that you are feeling towards the other. A, anger is a mask for fear and pain. Take the mask of anger off and then recognize what fear or what pain is driving that emotion. That's the first thing. Mm. That immediately then... Uh, 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 neutralizes that emotion. And then I suggest you start journaling. Yeah. I have a beautiful purple bling glitter journal and that it's called my letters to God. So every morning or every evening, once a day, at least I write a letter to God. And if I'm pissed off beyond pissed off, I will tell God why I'm angry. And I'll say, please, just when you write back, show me what I need to see here. Because, you know, sometimes me, I'm a little bit. <laughs> so just show me how I can recognize what I need to recognize in your letter back to me. So whether it's in a dream that you speak to me, which God often speaks to me is in a dream. Because if I open my mind up to receiving dreams, I'll get them. Or an insight or through someone else having a conversation with me or something, but God always gives me a message back. And you've just got to be awake and aware. That's how I would say we begin this process because it's very difficult to try and understand where do I begin taking responsibility for my emotions or taking responsibility for my anger or how do I begin to trust myself? You know, all of these things, because these are things we need to learn. If we're going to move into a fifth dimensional awareness or the new, the new earth consciousness, we need to learn new ways of thinking. We need to learn new ways of doing things. We need to learn new ways of being basically. And it begins here. And I think all of us right now can identify very strongly with the emotion of anger. And to, and to change that, we want to start being compassionate with ourselves because, as the Buddha said, you know, anger is like holding a hot coal in your hand with the intention of throwing it at someone. And the only person who's getting burnt is you. Mm -hmm. So it's about learning how to... Just let it go. Nurse your hand. 
And yeah. then when you've seen the compassion and you've felt compassion towards yourself, then you can look at the other person and then you're all the situation then automatically you start feeling compassion towards them as well. It's not something you try to do to feel better about someone else because you're never going to get it right like that. I can promise you that now. It happens of itself yeah. when you have shown yourself compassion and you have understood you are hurting and you are angry, and you feel rejected, you feel abandoned, you feel whatever these things are that are hidden behind the anger. So we begin with that. That's all. And that's where we begin. That's where we begin. In Mary Magdalene's oh, Gospel, I don't know if y'all have read Mary Magdalene's Gospel, but it's basically a lot of these concepts are in it, which is why the church banned it. Um, but she talks about the wisdom of the wrathful person, that there is wisdom in your anger. And it's kind of what you're saying, Shanti, like if you're able to recognize and kind of look at these emotions as like a nugget of gold or gold that's like wrapped in mud and you just kind of kind of peel it back because she does talk about that the wisdom of the wrathful person and with what mm -hmm. i find with anger of course i talk about the friction a lot if we just like sailed through life with no issues and there was no hurt no fear no anger none of that we would be like the lizard on the rock just sunning all day like nothing would ever happen to evolve us and change us and so with this exactly. anger fear sadness there is wisdom in that and you oh, talk about sweet. hearing from God. I, I have so many weird experiences. And I remember one time, not too long ago, I was driving and I was really in this state of like sadness. I was really missing someone, a friend of mine, like that I hadn't spoken to, like really missing this person. And I was driving. I usually have my radio turned up really loud because I just love music. But it was like, I turned it down and then it kind of, it was in between a song. And all of a sudden this voice came through the radio that said, it's okay to miss someone. And then it went back into the advertisement, the commercial. And I knew that was God. Like I knew it was God saying, it's okay to miss someone. Don't be mad at yourself for being in this longing. It's okay to miss someone. It's okay to, to honor that, that feeling. And I think that's, and I think, especially in the Western world, especially as, as Americans, like we're, you know, always trying to keep up with the Joneses and we have to put, you know, with social media, you have to put this front up. And so when these uncomfortable feelings come up, the first is accepting that, that that's part of the human experience. It's part of humaning, you know, it's part it's of why you came. Thing. It's probably the, one of the main reasons why you came here is because what I, I quote you a lot, Shanti, because I love it. You say, we came here to learn what we are not. I love, yeah. I want, I'll put, I want, we should put that on a t-shirt. Like that is, <laughs> that's why we came here. <laughs> exactly. Not. It's exactly. so true because through that you learn who you are. It's always yeah. in life you realize, okay, I don't like this. Then you realize, okay, I like this. So it's it's really true. Yeah. And I just wanted to act with compassion as Shanti was talking about. I have compassion, it's, and that's why we teach compassion in the Sun Kids as well, the Soul School. It's a main subject because uh, com only through compassion one gets the wisdom. It's only in compassion that you truly get understanding. It's that moment of compassion that you truly understand. You know, I'm talking about the emotional stuff. It's yeah. only through compassion that you can truly understand the situation. And that's where wisdom comes from. So yeah. compassion brings wisdom, true wisdom in that sense. Not knowledge, not yeah. knowing. And yeah, people, people have... People are scared to be human. They think human is to, you have to be like this and this, and you can't feel bad things because feeling bad things is bad. But being human is feeling everything, like you were talking about missing somebody. Sadness is part of is love. That's yeah. one word people throw out there. Love and love and God is two words people misuse in this world for me. They like use it everywhere and they, they nobody understands it. <laughs> yeah. Love is like there's no opposite of love. Love is every emotion, all spectrum of emotion. Love is. Yeah. Love will and I love Kiyoko Brown. That's a beautiful thing about love. If love calls for you, you should hear its call and it will. It's only when you're found worthy and everything. I love that Kiyoko Brown on love thing. But basically, love is is every emotion it's the sadness it's betrayal it's everything and love is complete but when things are out of balance it feels bad but it's still complete it's still love everything is there you just need to like ooh, rebalance like rewire and then love is complete and you will feel sadness and you will feel anger but then it won't be 
a reaction or something that you have to go suppress. It will be a natural, uh, and you can start speaking the language of your soul. Then, then we can start telecommunicating. I mean, if our hearts can start speaking the language that it's meant to speak, we don't need to talk. We will just like, like our animals when we do animal communication. They walk in the room, you feel them walking in the room. If they're sad, you feel them sad. I'm like, okay, what's, what's you sad about? We don't need to talk a lot. Of, we don't need to talk a lot. We will be, if we need to talk, I think yeah. we'll be singing. Or, or justify. I just, I just heard that justify. Like, I feel like as human beings, sometimes when we, sometimes when we are in the space to acknowledge an emotion, then we, we feel, we then feel the need to justify it. Like why we're feeling this way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's okay just to acknowledge that you're a human being and this is what you're feeling. You don't have to prove it to someone else that you're worthy of feeling the anger. You're worthy of feeling the sadness. It's, it's what it is. Um, and mm -hmm. yeah, I, I was sick animals. I think we have so much to learn from animals. Because animals don't, they don't seem to hold on. Some do, but you know, like I know Catherine's talked about this as well. Like, you know, if my dog does something wrong and I, you know, oh no, no, he's not upset for very long, you know, because he knows that I think he, he, he feels that regardless of whether he's done, he's been naughty or not, he knows I would give my life for him. You know, he knows that underneath that is love, you know, whereas as human beings, sometimes I think we forget that we, we forget that. <laughs> That that yeah, like the, the same like when we were kids, you know, you will get in a fight with your friend and you were like fighting for, for five minutes or ten minutes, and then 50 minutes later you'll be like playing together again, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Are your brothers and sisters? Yeah, that's like I mean, big time. Uh, well, with brothers and sisters, a little bit different. It can go on for days, maybe. <laughs> I saw long. the funniest meme about a sibling. A sibling is someone you would give an organ for, like you would give an organ for a sibling, yeah. but you're not going to let them bar borrow your charger. Like they can't borrow your phone charger, but you would give them a kidney. <laughs> Very complicated relationship, but you would totally give them a kidney, but they can't borrow your phone charger. So <laughs> I'm not even sure if I'd give them out a kidney right now. I'm quite honest with you. <laughs> now those are sibling relationships, man. Those are sometimes, I don't think my sister and I actually have much karma because we have a very even killed relationship, but um, those are very interesting learning, learning relationships. Aren't they? <laughs> How wild is that? You literally grow up in this house with this other human being that shares the same parents as you do. You spend your childhood together. And how many siblings have you met that say there's like three or four of them? They, they're close in age. They've all grown up in the same house, but every single sibling will give you a replay of a very different childhood. They all have oh, very yes. different yeah. perspectives. And that just shows you how complicated and how we are all very wired in a different way. And a lot of that, I believe, is things that we decided on before taking this life in order to learn the lessons we needed to learn. You know? Oh, definitely. We, 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 I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that we choose our parents, we choose our experiences, we choose our family. And the family, the family dynamic is, is probably for most people the toughest that there is. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the blood, the blood, the blood, 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 I want, I don't want to say bloodline. Uh, that's but it's the, you know, your your flesh and blood. Yeah. Basically, definitely. Those are very, very often the most challenging. Oh yeah, definitely. For oh, sure. Yeah. 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 And I, I always say that um, we come here for, um, well, with my family at least, we loved each other, each other so much, we came here to show each other our shit. <laughs> 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 so they're like, please. And um, with doing them, uh, since I met you, uh, since I started doing the digging work, so to say, my childhood, uh, childhood has changed. Like, I mean, I can't even know how many times my childhood, my idea of, you know, my perception of my childhood has changed so many times. Every time I discover something or see something differently. Yeah. So, yes, everybody has their own perspective. And it's only a point of view of their own perspective. Yes. So once you go yeah. inside of yourself, you get so many point of views. And once you get that three, 360 degree point of view, you mean, uh, there's so many. Yeah, yeah, for, me, for me, everything is about communication. It really, really is. You know, I think the most challenging experiences uh, can be resolved through communication. You don't have to agree. You don't have to agree with the other person. But it's, you know, when, I mean, in my, in my family, for example, I'm definitely the odd one out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm the only one who doesn't carry a family name. I'm the only one who's RH negative. I'm the, like, they'll all turn even numbers and I'll turn an uneven number, you know? Um, so definitely in many, in many ways. 
Um, I'm a communicator. So I like to express my emotions and I like to express what I feel so that we can understand each other. My family likes to sweep things under the carpet. So they, they, don't, they don't like to, um, it's like, don't say anything. Just, just don't say anything. I mean, for me, that drives me insane, actually. It's like, we need to speak. You know, you, you don't have to, for example, agree with each other but we can respect each other. Um, and, you know, it's like, I was just actually saying, for example, in, uh, with Tom Althaus's show last night, it's like doing the work I'm doing now, especially I've always been a different one in my family, for sure. Um, but especially doing the work I'm doing now and really digging up the stuff that we're digging up, it's like become even more, <gasps> you know, um, probably half of them understand what's going on, but they roll over and play dead, you yeah. know? And the other half is I'm a conspiracy theorist spreading misinformation. Yeah. Um, so for, for me, that, that, that is tricky. I'm not going to tell a lie because it's like, if it's not even about me, I'm not the one that has been and abused in the worst possible ways but so many people have so you know it's like how do we not express it how do we not do something about it you know i get that we're all in different places but i think that's why for me communication is so important and especially in the family because here we got to talk you know i mean it begins with your your own flesh and blood so it's about learning how i think to find a bridge within your own personal family. And when you've been able to resolve that, it makes it much easier to then deal with the outside world. I think when you know that your family has your back, you know that they, you've got your family in your corner, um, that type of thing. Um, I think life becomes a lot. It's like having a, a spouse, um, but it's, it's so wonderful to get up in the morning and know that you've got a fabulous partner in your life who has your back. Right. Yeah. So, and I think that I think as I'm sitting here now would be a really good place for most people to start, whether it's your family or whether it's your relationship that you are in is to find that camaraderie with, with another and from there, you feel like you're just more equipped to deal with life. And especially when challenges come by, and especially in these times, you know, because these are challenging times. It's like Tom was saying last night as well. Certain people are on the verge of losing their homes. We are probably going to need to open our homes to people soon, you know, invite them in, feed them. And I mean, you know, Offer, offer compassion in, in ways I like that. about that last night, actually. I had wow. a dream yeah. about, um, I wasn't in Atlanta. I was somewhere else, but I was with a bunch of people and we were opening up like, it was almost like we had this like apartment complex, but we, we owned it. We were opening up all these rooms for all these families to move in. And it was almost like an emergency situation where there was no checking backgrounds. It was just like, bring your kids, come on, come inside. So it's wild. She just said that. And I woke up and I was like, yeah. what was that? Like, I don't even know where that came from, but it was, it was, it was, my mom was there and it was like ushering people in and I didn't recognize the building or anything, but it was, yeah, yeah it's wild. You and said I really, that, yeah. I truly think, you know, when we talk about suffering and, 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 and that sort of thing, it really is about becoming community orientated now as well. We're going to have to learn how to share. You know, in Africa, yeah, we, they, the African people have a wonderful culture. They call it really Ubuntu. And that is sharing, you know. Uh, and, and isn't it funny as well? People on the streets who are begging and another beggar comes and says, do you have a dollar? It'll be the other beggar that gives them a dollar. You know, these people running will say, go get a job or go do something or whatever. And I'm, I'm not going to lie. I often give people money and stuff like that. But there are times I think 
do you just go wash a car or do something? But please, you know, how many times can I be giving people money every day? Um, you know, I'm not going to say those thoughts have definitely crossed my mind as well. But I think that there's a wonderful thing here where, where it's like the family or it's everyone in the village is your family. You take after, you, you know, you take care of each other's kids. You take care of each other's mothers. You take care of each other's fathers. So I really think the time is coming where we are going to be called to take care of each other. And, and I was having a wonderful conversation with one of my good friends the other night in, in Johannesburg. And it's like we were saying, we need to take care of each other now. You know, that really is. And even if it's a phone call once a week or what have you, and just have a glass of wine or whatever it might be, chatting and having a pizza, you know, on Zoom or something. That's the kind of thing. Um, and I think a lot of people, because I also think a lot of people are going to exit in yes. the next two years. Same. So yeah. there's going to, yeah. Yes. I think in the next two to four years, we, we need to, we've got to bite the bullet and we have to really just make sure that spiritually we are enriched so that we are able to be that support, kindness, compassion for the other. And we've got to stop thinking this is my home, my electricity, my water, my, my property, food. Yeah. My, yeah, yeah. We've got to we've got to really learn to open our hearts and our homes and learn. Otherwise that's going to be forced upon us because we've we've separated and segregated ourselves so much. Um I was gonna, I meant to What's say this in the beginning, but we got yeah. to chat. Speaking of it, I'm doing this like love challenge. I started this week. I saw this on Twitter um, a few weeks ago, days ago. It says, it's a sign someone made. It says, I love you. You're probably thinking you don't even know me. But if people can hate for no reason, I can love. And so I put this yeah. challenge out this week. The due date is Monday the 21st for our community watching to make a sign uh, saying that in your, in your mother tongue, whatever your mother tongue is, whatever country you live in, uh, take a picture of it. If you want to be in the picture, you can be, if not, no worries. And then email it to esoteric Atlanta, LC at gmail.com. This is an email I opened up just for this project. So esoteric Atlanta, LC for love challenge, um, with your picture, what country you're in. And if you want to put your name in there, go ahead. And I'm going to make a reel of everyone all over the world, putting these signs up um saying, lovely wow so Beautiful. since you're talking about that i totally forgot to so so we and we can we can be that force of change because it is a it is a collective consciousness and it's like that michael jackson song man in the mirror if we all start with ourselves and it's interesting when you're talking about people who like refuse to see it like put their head in the sand and i think shanti we've talked about this i know sean stone talks about this that the the macro of what we're seeing the destruction from the the you know, on the, that we're seeing from the, the 1%, we'll say, that is a, ref, a direct reflection yeah. that triggers the darkness inside of us as well. Doesn't mean that you're doing what they're doing, but we all have a shadow side. And that's really sure. uncomfortable work. That's really uncomfortable to like sit back and go, okay, sometimes I'm an asshole. Like sometimes I'm a really awful, and to have to like sit into that and like own that. And, um, and that's the hardest part of any spiritual work. But I think sometimes when people don't want to look at that, it's not necessarily that they don't believe you or that they think you're crazy. It's just that they don't want to have to look at themselves. They don't want to have yeah, that reflection exactly. of the ugliness in themselves too. And therefore it's, well, I mean, I'll tell you something. My ass on this comes out when there's, when I have intolerance and impatience to that. Absolutely. Because, and I, t I say that all the time, you know, and, you know, it's like, I think to myself, well, clearly I need to be more patient with this, you know, and I get that. But I also understand that when we're looking at things around us, we don't really have the time to be ignorant anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's kind of like where we're going at the moment because we have been, and that's what, you know, it's like, I think the two of you were saying it earlier on. It's been walking around with eyes wide shut for a long time. We've, we've allowed this to happen on so many levels through uh, being indoctrinated, through ignorance, through not wanting to see what's going on out there, you know. Not, not so it really is. Just the simple, yeah, like, yeah. not being allowed to question authority. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
Exactly. And complying, just going against our intuition. How many people have complied with this narrative in the past two years, going completely against their own intuition, but we just want to get back to normal. There is never going to be the same normal. Nope. We've got to create a new normal. Yeah. And that's what this is calling for, you yeah. know. And I think we really are in the stages of transitioning. And it's always a challenging time when we're in that alchemical transitioning stage, most definitely, um, which is tough. But we just, you know, we, we're going to have to just persevere and, and do it and, and just so look within and just so go so deep and so dark and find the diamond within that's going to spark it up and go, aha, that's what I've been looking for. What's funny you say we have to create a new normal and it hit me. Something just hit me. It's like, we'll put this out there. A new normal has to be created. We can either create it or they can create it. And the choice is ours. (laughs) The choice is ours. We just have to be the ones to, to do that and to, and to really work through this and um, stop putting your head in the sand and stop, stop freaking complying. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's as simple as not wearing one of these to the grocery store. Just don't wear one. It's as simple as that. And, um, and it's funny cause we were, we've talked about this Shanti and I've, I've said this before, like I, you know, any type of spiritual practice that you're involved with, whether that's yoga or something else, it's all, you know, the, the purpose is, generally the same. And one of that purpose is being able to see the truth or the illusion. A lot of that is your own truth or your own illusion. But in the macro, it's so like we were saying on Monday, it's so obvious right now that everything that they're telling us is a lie. It's so freaking obvious. The illusion is so obvious. That's why we said it was like an open book test because it's so freaking obvious that it's an illusion. And I'm seeing people that I, I have known in the yoga world that are you know more experienced than me or senior to me that have fallen hook, line, and sink, sinker for this illusion. And it's made me question, like, I know now who I can't learn from. I'm sorry, if you didn't see this, I can't learn from you because you're still yeah. in, you're still deep into the illusion. You haven't found the truth. But the beautiful thing about that, as much of a mourning process that's been for me and other people, is that it really puts it back in your lap. You know, teachers are great, but you're, you're the one doing the work. You're your own sovereign guru you're your own person that's you can bring a horse to water but you can't make him drink if you drink if you drink and you now have evolved to the point where you can really see what needs to be seen then why are you going to, to for someone else's approval anyway do that is see because you saw exactly it. your work has been you obviously did work exactly you know really the guru is within and you know i always say and i've said this for a long time sit at the feet of your own life and I always find that interesting because above me, I have that gorgeous picture. Oh, beautiful. And um, always the feet that stick out. So I often see that then as symbolic of me sitting at the feet of my own life, because this is generally where I would reflect upon that. It's not easy to be your own guru. You know, people, we just got to look out there. How many people are looking for a hero? whether it's Trump or whether it's even Jesse yeah. or, you know, Jesse says this and Jesse says that. And Jesse has a lot of beautiful things to say, but at the end of the day, Jesse is her own person who has her life and her challenges. You are your own person who has you li- your life and your challenges. And if she says something which sparks the truth in you, then allow that to be the catalyst for things to open up in you, but then follow that truth. People will say things. It's the same thing with with myself. I mean, I've been a spiritual teacher for 20 years now. And I've had the most beautiful people that I've worked with, you know, and they'll say to me, Shanti, you know, had it not been for you. I don't like that, to be perfectly honest, because I believe, you know, to be a good healer, you show people what to look, but look for, but not what to see. Yeah. So, yes, I will always tell this. And I had a beautiful um, uh, appointment with a beautiful lady earlier on today. And she and I were both crying because she's had such massive, she's on one of my alchemy workshops right now. And she's had, had some massive transformations. And I just said to her, you know, she said to me, had it not been for you, I wouldn't have been 
at the place I am now. And this is week nine. Okay. This is week nine that they, that they're just finishing up now. And I said, I will show you what to see, but you've always had to do the work. Yeah. So it's, you know, absolutely. I understood what has been gold in my life. I've understood what is, what has been the catalyst for gold in my life. And that's what I've shared. I've not shared some person teaching me this and some 10th lineage that, and, I, I, I was born knowing things. It has been my purpose and my journey to take something very abstract and create something very tangible that others can understand. Yeah. And I am so grateful that I've reached that place in my life. Really, I am. And I must say, you know, having people like Mornay at my side has been amazing because from the creative side as well has been incredible. So, and, and not just Mornay, although he's been certainly the main person, but there've been lots of students and, and people that I've worked with. And each and every one, each and every workshop we do, um, the, the people come in there and they will give us gold, man, just by sharing who they are. I mean, yeah. one of the guys on my workshop, he was up for people. And when it came to, and in fact, this was one of the weeks that when it came to sharing their story, because one of the things we work with is the tricky trio, uh, shame, guilt, and humiliation. He shared, he told the group, and he's prepared to have this recording out there for the world to listen wow. to. Yeah. And I want to tell you, I cannot tell you how many people have learned from his story. Yeah. It's just amazing. And I, and I said to and she mentioned him today, and I said, you know, I know the guy well. He lives not too far from me. And I said his whole life has turned around because of that. Yeah. And honestly, he's, he, it's something we judge people very, very harshly for. I get yeah. that. Um, I'm very grateful I have not been a victim to that, and neither has my granddaughter. But I know a lot of others have been. But I also understand there's a lot of karma between people who have those experiences. Yeah. So he has been able to turn his life around because I did not judge him. I said to him, you need to tell me the truth. Because if you want me to help you, I need to know the truth so I can hold your hand through this process. And he told the truth. And it's just been an amazing thing to see how the truth really does set people free. So my point around this is there's nothing so bad and so awful that we've done for which we can't transcend out of. Yeah. There is gold in everything. And there's just beautiful human beings out there who have a lot of compassion and a lot of kindness in their heart. And those are the people that help the others to heal. Not me. Not me. It's the rest of the people that take that journey and it's yes i'm going to scratch things my that's why i have a nose I've got a big nose you can see my nose catches a whiff of everything <laughs> <laughs> and when i get mm, i smell something they go oh, that's where we're going no 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 not there <laughs> <laughs> there's something so i've talked about this with Catherine as well we've talked about like the ego the thought sense of self versus the the true self and there is something very, and I use the word sexy, just when people are able to be vulnerable, when they're able to admit things in a very humble way, there's something very attractive about that quality because it's real. The soul recognizes it as real. Truth. And that's, it's truth. truth. And when we look at somebody that's who's set in their ego, who can't admit anything, who has to put up that false, it's so repulsive. Because it's a lie. It's not true. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. when I, you know, and I know it's hard. It's so hard to admit when you've been wrong or when you've done something awful or things that have happened to you. That's a very vulnerable place to be in. But if you put yourself outside of the situation and see when someone else has done it and how much more respect and how much more compassion and love you feel for that person, you should also be giving that to yourself too. And know that Absolutely. it's it's we're all it's like that infinity sign you talked about. It's like we're all shot in our last episode. It's like we're all looping together through this. Yeah. And um and our obstacles. But you know, 
Sorry, Bryce, I want to just say on that note how beautiful it is when people become vulnerable because when other people become vulnerable and we witness their vulnerability as well, it's like they give us permission to become vulnerable too. Exactly. So it's a two-way street, exactly what you're saying, that infinity yeah. sign, right? So yeah. when, when, when I hear you becoming vulnerable, it inspires me to want to become vulnerable too. And we have this beautiful conversation where both of us become vulnerable and, and we both cry and we can both be caring towards each other and understand each other's sadnesses. And because at the end of the day, we all have hurts and pains and things we are not proud of and all of these things you know we're humans we've made mistakes and some of us have done some very ugly things and you know what's ugly you know what's ugly to one might not be ugly to another it's what your shame is it's what you're ashamed of if you feel ashamed of something and i implore you because that's we're talking now about the, the 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 alchemy group this week it's all about dealing with humiliation shame and guilt the tricky trio i call them well, and like you'll that. see how interwoven they are and the minute you start allowing them to, I'm writing this to down, not by the take way. a hold of you yeah for sure <laughs> i like it that become, they become your superpower the thing that you've been most ashamed of and you are no longer ashamed of it we talk about it you understand it's like the lady i was telling you about um she spoke to me about something she felt that happened 20 years ago that she felt so incredibly ashamed of which then led her to 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 something else that happened when she was a child and then i showed her how to link and she had no understanding that that was linked to that. And when I showed her what the link was, suddenly everything just opened up. And all the guilt, all the shame, all the humiliation dissolved within five minutes. It yeah. was gone. I, that's why I call them the, the gatekeepers, the, the three gatekeepers sisters. I think that's what I called them. <laughs> They're the gatekeepers. They opened the doors once you... Uh, yeah <laughs> amazing yeah. yeah that's how and that's how we heal guys so we heal by recognizing that within ourselves you know the big thing is that we that we also work with is the learner teacher teacher learner so we we get to identify the things that we are not comfortable with in ourselves our own incompletions and when we recognize that and we're no longer judging ourselves we then can recognize someone else's incompletions or completions and then we we can recognize that but without judgment yeah. and it's just such a beautiful thing when you seeing that a within yourself and then in another you know there was something someone said to me once um and i love the whole connecting the dots things because everything is like really it's it's a chain event yeah. of, of, of of it and when you release it things shift but Someone said to me once when I was in university that, um, and I'm paraphrasing, you know, when you're a little kid, you look at your parents sometimes, regardless of whether you had a harmonious home or a crazy home, but children often view their parents as these, no, these, these gods and goddesses who know it all and are like the bearers of life. And then there, and the person said to me, the real sad day is when you realize your parents are just human beings. But there's a third <laughs> step too, because when you realize that your parents don't necessarily know everything and you can disagree with them, and sometimes your parents are crap and that they're just human beings, that's not so sad because then you realize because of that, because they're also faltered, there's a liberation that happens within you as well. Does that make sense? It's like when you realize oh, that it, human beings human beings are not no Absolutely. human being is perfect it gives you that freedom to understand that it's okay to have be different from somebody it doesn't make either one bad but it also makes it okay for you to make mistakes and for mm -hmm. you to fall and they're not mis that's one thing i really can't stand oh, there's a lot i can't stand about the church but one of the things i can't stand about the church is this whole <laughs> emphasis that's on sin and it's just bad 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 but the original definition of sin just simply meant to miss the mark to just miss the mark, to not understand who, who you really are. And my opinion is if you commit a sin or a mistake, it's not really a sin or mistake if you take that, what you did, that experience and use it 
to your better, yeah. good, your higher good. The alchemy. Exactly. It's, it's exactly, it's, it's taking, it's taking those issues and failing forward. So it's taking whatever the things were that you thought you failed on and you use that as a stepping stone to understand how to do it differently next time or what not to do. And always remember we did, you know, even if you've committed the, a horrendous crime at the time, that was probably the only thing that you thought that you had to survive. Yeah. Or if you murdered someone, you probably thought that that was the only way that you could live at that point or whatever it might've been. I don't know, you know, um, but, there is nothing that is unforgivable. Nothing, 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 nothing. Yeah, so it really is. It's about you getting to that place inside of yourself and saying, I mean, I also heard a terrible story again from one of my students this week um, where they did something horrendous to an animal. Uh, I had to just, oh my gosh, bite my lip and just work with that, process that. And eventually today I connected with the animal spirit and I understood the clarity of that. So it's very easy and I could understand why the people were so ashamed that never wanted to talk about that for sure. Um, it was the first time I think it was spoken about to me. And it was like, you know, often as a healer, you're going to get these people, um, I almost say dumping stuff on you. It's not dumping. But as a healer, you take this on. And as an alchemist, I've, I choose to do that. And I've got to alchemize that, not just for myself, but for the person and the animal as well. Yeah. So I prayed about that. And I had to sit with that. And then I must say, through my conversation with a client earlier today who, who, who I was telling you about with the, with the guilt and the everything 20 years ago, also involved a little animal. Um, and then I got the connection together and suddenly I just got the answer and the alchemy occurred and I could see how these animals had been teachers for both the families. Wow. And that set me free and the spirits of them as well. So there's so much beauty in what we do when we understand what it is to sit with that dark stuff, to sit with pain, to sit with discomfort and not try to run away from it and not try to be all love and light, love and light, love and light and, 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 and then judge people who are doing things, in your opinion, that aren't about love and light. You know, there are a lot of people who are doing those things, um, but they really don't know any better. And I understood what they didn't understand, if that makes sense. Not so much the today one, that, that was not nearly anything like a few days ago that I heard. And I don't want to talk about it because it's obviously, I'm just using the examples, um, but it's heavy stuff, very heavy stuff. Um, and once, you know, once we understand that every spirit has its contract, whether it's an animal or a human, we have contracts with each other. Yeah. And our animals are our guides on many, many instances. Yeah. And that yeah. person, you know, it's like Jesus said at his crucifixion, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. And really... Animals will say the same thing when a human being is being atrocious. You know, I've been saying that a lot in my head when I see people that annoy me because they're promoting the nonsense, the whimsical nonsense of the narrative. And I'll catch myself and I'll just say, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Like, I've caught myself saying that a lot. And I don't know if it's just for me to release that judgment, you know, but it's interesting you bring that up. I've been saying that forgive them for they know not what they do. They are supporting, you know, and I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. Like I've been getting really annoyed with all the like fundraisers for, um, I don't know if I Ukraine basically, um, because they're supporting the bad guys. And I, and like you guys, 
you should know better because you should know what these people do. And it's not even about the country. It's not even about the people of the country. It's about this, uh, this various group. And it just, it, it, it's infuriated me, but forgive them father for they know not what they do. They think they're doing a good thing, but they just don't want to look at the reality of the situation. And uh, I will say the thing that I've learned the hard way many times is that if there is this darkness that you're running from, whatever it is, the shame, the guilt, whatever, from something, running from it and ignoring it, it's not going to make it go away. It will catch you. It will keep coming up in your life as a repetitive patterns in your life until, you know, that's some people have to hit rock bottom until the God, the universe goes, no, you're going to sit down and look at this. Stop ignoring this. You can't, you can't graduate until you actually go through this course. You know, and so sometimes when we surrender to that and we actually just sit down and start to do the work, it's just it's just so liberating and freeing. And I am going to put again, guys, in the description box, I'm going to put all of the links for their social media, their channel, but also the links for any of the uh, workshops that Shanti does. I know Mornay, you're involved in that as well. Healing sessions um, with them, because this is like so, so, so important. And I've said this before. Yeah. I love you bring it up, Shanti, because I know even as a yoga teacher myself, um, we always have like cards, business cards in our shala with like therapists and stuff, because Shanti, Mornay, myself, nobody, no light worker can actually do the work for you. They're just conduits to show you what you already really kind of know deep down and to help you yeah. hold your hand yeah. while you, you have to do that. You're the only, that's your superpower. It's not something to be afraid of or to fear. It's your freaking superpower that you're the only exactly. one to do that work for you. That, that you actually are that magician that can take that lead and turn it to gold. Absolutely. I love, I love what, I love that. You are your own magician. Absolutely. And you know, and nothing that we're going to say to you is new information. Your spirit knows everything. What we do is really just remind you. We'll just go scratch, scratch there, scratch, scratch there. And then suddenly, you you know, the artwork of your soul is revealed right there in front of you. We just help you scratch away the moss. That's all. And then you see what's truly inside of you. Absolutely. Yeah. It's beautiful. We're doing spiritual work on yourself is one of the yeah. hardest paths you will ever take. But it is the most liberating and most beautiful thing that you could do for yourself. And so, guys, I'm really, I really want to encourage everybody that that, in, in my opinion, even even if you want to look at it from a broader broader uh, spectrum, that, in my opinion, is what it means to say we are the storm. It's us taking that power back to to alchemize ourselves individually, so that collectively, as a consciousness, we can we can change the direction of this ship. You know, and so, um, and so people like Shante Mornay are here to help you start that process. Um, and again, it's your superpower. It's your freaking super plot twist. You're yeah, the, exactly. the magic one plot twist. You're the magic one. So, um, <laughs> so guys, it's a good plot twist, isn't it? That's, that's just, that's the beautiful thing. Even though this time is so just all oh, like, we're so ready for everything to be over. I know I personally can't wait to hug morning and Shanti in person. Um, yeah. at this point yeah. I might just have to ask for travel, oh. especially with the gas prices going up, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I'm ready for all of this yeah. to be over. But it, in my opinion, knowing the way like spirituality works, from my understanding is it's not going to be over until we all individually start to work on ourselves and our exactly. start to accept things and work through things. So, so guys, I'm going to encourage each of you. And I love the whole journaling thing. Shanti, I tell my students to journal all the time, like when they feel yeah. like, and I actually even tell people just start writing, even if it makes no sense, just keep your hand moving and don't stop and just see what comes out. You know, the first yeah, few lines might not make so, any sense, yeah. but then all of a sudden things are going to come out that you did not expect to see. And <laughs> ding, 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 that's when it gets juicy, right? That's when you become... Very juicy. Very and that's juicy. beautiful. That's like you... It's that, that moment. And I want to I want to say, no typing. Yeah. You want to scribe. Because scribing channels wisdom. And every shape of every letter and every word, it's channeling wisdom from God or your divine source, your higher self, your higher consciousness. And just by writing the shape of the words and the letters, it's such a beautiful experience just to yes. sit with yourself 
and you don't and have to show anyone. You can, it can just be you and God. You don't have to show anyone what comes out on that piece of paper. Yeah, like, that's, yeah, yeah. It's very private. But yeah, and I would say don't. Yeah, don't. Talk. I still, I people make fun of me. I have like in the other my other bookcase, I have like shelves of notebooks. When I research, I longhand. I I I I'll send outlines to people sometimes mm -hmm. typed up, but I always longhand. There's something very uh, yeah. therapeutic about actually writing. Absolutely. Anyway, I agree. Anyway. And you know what I also do, there comes a time like sometimes on the 30th or the 31st of the year or around about the, say the night before my birthday or something, I'll have a bonfire and all my old journals and stuff, I will then just bonfire and just because fire is a highly transformational energy. So I just transform it, send it into the universe's light and let it go, let go and let God. So yeah, beautiful. You know, wow. And if you don't, yeah, if you if you if you're writing and you're scared, and unfortunately, it sometimes has definitely happened that someone gets hold of your journals and reads them, and you know that's obviously not something you want to be doing. So if you're scared of that, then sit outside the next day or even the week later and strike a match or light it, burn it. And you could. We have. I don't know if you guys like little kids journals or diaries. When I was a kid, they would have little locks on it. Little locks? <laughs> I had them. Yeah. If you're worried, just look at a little kid's journal with a lock on it. Put that key on your yeah, yeah. thing. So. Exactly. <laughs> so, I, I will admit something. If my sister is watching right now, I, I used to sneak into your bedroom and read your diaries. I remember <laughs> uh, all your little boyfriends. I write about all of them. In the, I, I mean, we were so young. Uh, so I will admit that if my sister is watching uh, and if my brother-in-law is watching, call me. I'll give you all the juicy details about her fifth <laughs> <laughs> so, I will never admit that. <laughs> I will admit that. I read my sister's. I would sneak into her room and read her diaries when she was a kid. So my journal always has a lock on it. Hers did not. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. oh I wonder I wonder if any of my siblings read mine. <laughs> it's actually my kind of mom, cute. Your mom, mom did it twice with different diaries. And then she left the diary back again, but then she wrote a page or two for me back in my diary. <laughs> Oh, I was so angry at her all the time, <laughs> but she was like very scary, you know, she's actually very concerned, but I was so angry and then I refused to write in that diary and I got a new one, but yeah, I loved it twice, <laughs> and I hide it away, <laughs> but my mom will find it. <laughs> Uh, you know, and, but it's adorable to read people, little kids. I, I y'all, I'll just end this on a, a funny note, and I cannot remember the name of the show, but it, whatever country you're in, if you just kind of put some words in the search engine on YouTube or Rumble or something, there was a show where they would film people. You could go to like a comedy club, and they would film adults, 30s, 40s, 50 year old adults, to bring in a journal from your childhood and read to the crowd wow. one of your journal <laughs> entries. From it is the funniest. I think it's called like humiliated or something. Like it is one. Of, it is if you want a good laugh at at just being a human. I'll see if I can find. I'll look for it today before I post this and see if I can put if I can put it in the description box. Um, if I can remember, I might. might but I would suggest because and I watching that. Show, I've watched the series. I have never laughed so hard in my life. But it's because you recognize yourself in those journal entries. Oh, in all of that, yeah. And that's because we, you know, here's a 44 year old woman reading about a, a boy she had a crush on when she was 12, you know, and the ridiculousness <laughs> of the things you write when you're 12 and like how dramatic yeah. everything is. And people will read it with such really? a straight face, like such a straight face. <laughs> and you, it's just so funny because you see yourself in that because we're all, we're all human, you know? So, so. Yeah. Exactly. Um, anyway, well, guys, once again, please go subscribe to Aquarius Rising Africa and Solutions by Aquarius Rising Africa. Um, as you all know, we're constantly kind of sweating in our in our shirts a little bit because we never know when something's going to happen to our channel because we do push the envelope on our channels and we appreciate all your support for that. I know you guys understand that. 
um, we're up against, it's like a David, David and Goliath situation. So please make sure you're subscribed to both solutions by Aquarius rising Africa and Aquarius rising Africa, just in case, um, same for me. I have my rumble links down as well, just so you always have a way to keep in contact with us. If something were to ever happen, hopefully it won't knock on wood, but, um, and also I know you guys, if you go to their page too, they have, you have like what Odyssey, what are your bitch shoot Odyssey? What are your other backups? Odyssey, bitch shoot, telegram, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram yeah. as well right now. I'll put, okay, I'll put all those. <laughs> I'll put all those down in the, in, the, whew, that's the thing, in the description box as well for you guys. So please, please, please. And they have so many. I was Sunday. I think it was Sunday. I never know. It might have been Monday for y'all, but Sunday for us because we're like, y'all are time travelers to me because it's already ahead of there. But uh, you had <laughs> such great interviews of so many awesome whistleblowers unbelievable yeah. guys unbelievable so if you have a i would because shanti handles and morning handle things with such uh compassion if you have a uh, friend or family member that is just now starting to ace this open book test um i would definitely send them to aquarius rising africa because it's hard subjects but shanti and morning handle them with such compassion and such grace that i think it was one of the easier channels for a new person to really digest what's been going on yeah. in a very, very loving way. So I would absolutely tell your friends and family to check them out because I, and I have to commend you guys, you guys do handle every, every person you have that comes on your channel that has such a hard story to tell you guys handle that you handle it in such a respectful way and you handle it with such compassion. And it just speaks volumes of both of you, of your character and your intention um, in this, this, <laughs> Right. I don't want to say maybe transition battle. I don't know. You know, it's not for you guys. It's not just um, um, taboo stuff just to, to you know, <gasps> scandalous stuff to talk about. You actually have a purpose for this. And, and I have to commend you guys for that because that's hard to do. That takes a very talented person, a very compassionate person to handle these stories with the grace that you guys do. So Thank I just love you, you too. And um, I know our, our subscribers you. love you guys as well. And um, one day we'll all be able to hang out together, even with our subscribers and to celebrate. And, uh, all, I keep thinking, <laughs> exactly. I'm, I keep we thinking really we're are. actually closer together than we really are. Like I would be surprised if we could actually just canoe to each other. Like, <laughs> you know, that work. I'm the room so, I'm right in front of me. I'll be looking for your canoe, honey. <laughs> I would not be, I would be, no, I talk about being pissed off. If all these years we've been paying all this money to go on a freaking airplane and literally I could have just paddle boarded over to South Africa. Like, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Well, love you both. Um, and we'll talk to all of you soon. Bye.